Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I'm back in the saddle again. Out where a friend is a friend. Where the longhorn cattle feed on the lowly Jimson weed. Yeah, welcome to the back Savage Nation. The well, they're in New Hampshire tonight, and uh, the new motto amongst the Democrats in New Hampshire, I understand, is live free and get high. I mean, you have a choice uh, from column A between a commie and a criminal, and a choice from column B between a showman, a shaman, and a shanda. It's all much ado about nothing for most Americans. I realize the political class, which comprises, I guess, most of the people who listen to political talk radio, are obsessed with virtually every belch that goes on in the campaign. And they could talk about a single belch for four days. Why, he didn't say that before he said that. He didn't say that. No, he didn't really say that. He said that. No, he didn't say it. They said he said that, but he didn't really say that. And I say if he said that, he shouldn't have said that because he really didn't say that. How dare they say that he said that? No wonder they get high in New Hampshire, live free and get high. And no wonder I say it's much ado about nothing. I've had enough of it. Choose one from column A between a commie and a criminal. That would be the Democrats. Or choose one from column B between a showman, a shaman, and a shanda. That would be the Republicrats. Much ado about, month, about nothing. So I took a break from it all for a day. I had enough of it. And I watched a movie the other night. I actually went to a movie theater the night I did radio. I think it was Tuesday. I went to see The Big Short, which was about the collapse of our economy in 07, in 08, actually, which gave us Obama, 07, how it was orchestrated by Wall Street, mainly the uh, short sellers. It's an amazing movie, very complicated. It was all about credit default swaps, where they aggregated mortgages into big funds and then bet against them. Phenomenally well done, but I'll tell you the truth. I have a doctorate which includes partially studying epidemiology or statistics. I could hardly follow the movie. It was so, it was so difficult. And a person I went with is the CFO of a multi-billion dollar company. She had trouble following the plot. It's never going to do well. But it's a fabulous movie. Uh, the Big Short, directed by Adam McKay, starring Ryan Gosling, Christian Bale, who was fantastic as the doctor who invented the credit default swap. And uh, he played Dr. Michael Burry, who thought it all up. I recommend the movie if you just want to see how it was all, you know, how it all came down, because it's going to happen again. That's, that's the point I'm getting at. The Big Short is what I'm talking about. The U.S. mortgage housing crisis that I'm telling you about. It's about an eccentric ex-physician turned one-eyed capital hedge fund manager. He wears uh, shorts in, the, in his office, bare feet. He goes to supercuts for haircuts, my kind of guy. And he believed that the U.S. housing market was built on a bubble that would burst in the next few years. The company he works for as an investor allows Dr. Burry to do virtually anything he pleases with their funds. So Dr. Burry proceeds to bet against the housing market with the banks. And the banks, of course, are very happy to accept this proposal for something that has never happened in American history. The banks, you see, believe that the doctor is a crackpot, and therefore they're confident that they will win the deal. It's amazing to watch what goes on at Goldman Sachs and George Bank as played in the movie. And I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story because it'll get too complicated, but I'm recommending you watch the big short if you want to see how Obama... Uh, got elected. It, it's not directly related to his election, but it certainly had a lot to do with his election. And that leads me to last night. So last night I watched Madoff on channel on ABC. And normally I never watch network television. Never. I just don't. I, I don't like ads, so I don't watch it. Well, I shouldn't. Listen. I love ads. I love ads. That's why I listen to talk radio. I love ads. But when it comes to film, I, I lose continuity if I watch something with too many. So anyway, I watched it for one reason. I'm, I'm fascinated by Madoff for a number of reasons. How he got away with it, the corruption and collusion with the SEC, meaning the Bush government at the time. Oh, yeah, Chris Cox. You forgot his name. Blonde hair, blue-eyed Chris, Chris Cox. 
the head of the SEC, fundamentally, in my opinion, should have gone to jail for having allowed Madoff to get away with what he got away, away with. Because there were many people who knew what Madoff was doing and knew he was a crook. They tried to blow the whistle on him. The SEC looked the other way. And this wonderful guy out in Boston, the gentleman with the Greek name, is the one who pursued it. He said at one point when he went to the SEC in Boston and he tried to blow the whistle on what Madoff was doing, they laughed at him. And he said, look, I'm a soldier. I'm an ex-military guy. The guy says, so what? He said, I took an oath to defend America and the Constitution. This man is a criminal, what he is doing. And hundreds of thousands of people are going to be destroyed by him. The SEC still looked the other way. You understand? So the, the ABC original movie event last night, Madoff, did you see it? Let's start with that. Let's make it simple. Did you see the movie last night on television, Madoff, a new ABC original movie? I, I loved it. I didn't really like him. I don't, I don't like the actor very much. I forget his name. Uh, I lost his name. Dryface, Richard Dryface. And yet he does a good job of, of convincing the world that he's Madoff. He's five foot four. Even though Madoff was a tall man, he plays kind of a shrimpy, poor Jewish kid from Queens who robs the world blind and boasts about it, which is enough. It gives you the ick factor. You want to reach through the screen of his sanctimony and strangle him through the screen. You want to strangle him till the blood comes out of his eyes. And that brings us to Madoff again. Anyone listening to this show, were you robbed by Madoff? Were you robbed by Madoff? That's an old story, but it's a new story because it's coming back again. You may not know this. But what happened then is going to happen again. There are many Madoffs running around America taking your money. And I'd rather talk about the movie The Big Short. I'd rather talk about Madoff. If you call me about this Cruz Trump thing, I'm not taking your call. I won't do it. I'll go on strike. I will not do it. 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 I'd rather never do radio again if I have to do this. If I have, That's like a death sentence for me. It's like breaking rocks at San Quentin, even though they don't break rocks anymore. If you said to me, here's a sledgehammer, break rocks, I'd rather do that than talk about Cruz and Trump. How do you like that? I can't do it. I won't do it. I refuse to do it. I'm on strike, period. I will not do it. If that's all you want to talk about, you know what? Find another show to listen to because you're not going to hear about it on this show today. I've had enough of it. It's driving me crazy listening to this. Okay, let's have an election already and get over with this, this nonsense. Choose one from column A. That would be the Democrats, a commie and a criminal. Go ahead, take your choice. Or you want to choose from column B. You have a showman, a shaman, and a shanda. Make your choice there, whichever you want. And don't tell me the republic's in crisis and the world's coming to an end. You know, we know the whole story already. I've been saying it for years. Up to a point, it's true. And beyond a certain point, it's nothing but P.T. Barnum. That's all. So let's go back to what I'm talking about. Did you see the Madoff? thing last night. Already we got a Schmendrick on line one who you can drop immediately. He's saying what I said two days ago about the Glass-Steagall Act. He heard it on my show. He forgot he heard it on my show. Now he's calling me to, to, to repeat it on my show like I never heard it about the Glass-Steagall Act, even though it's part of my book three books ago. This is what I love about talk radio. They listen to your show and then call you like they discovered it. Much ado about nothing. Many of you don't even know the play. It was a comedic play written by a dead white male named William Shakespeare. And it says everything I need to say about this election. It combines elements of hilarity, meditations on honor, shame, court politics. <laughs> it's much ado about nothing. And yes, indeedy, much ado about nothing. You know, when we get to the election, I'll tell you whether I'm going to choose a cheese head or a knockwurst head. As I said to you last week, listening to the campaign that's ongoing. Now, I feel that if we went ahead 100 years from now and we look back upon the year 2016 in America, someone would write a parody that it was the age of the cheese heads versus the knockwurst heads. That one party wore a block of cheese on their heads and the other party wore a knockwurst on their heads. That's about as much sense as I can make out of this. The corruption on both sides is equivalent. The people who represent both sides are about the equivalent. There is almost no difference in the corruption and the hypocrisy of either party, which is why a true independent such as myself, Michael Savage, is misunderstood by both sides and distrusted by both sides because they don't own me. And by not owning me, they cannot control me. And by not controlling me, I am a threat to them. So it's the same thing all over again. 
And so that's why I went to the movies the other night. I never go to the movies. It was Wednesday, I think. What's today? Thursday. It was Tuesday night. It was getting dark early. It was cold out. Uh, the dog was somewhere. He wasn't with me. So I never go to the movies. I like to watch movies at home. And I went over to a little theater over here, a little one. There were four people in the theater. Because I, I knew what it was about, the big short. You see, I had been walking by the theater on the weekend, and the kid who takes tickets in there came running over to me. Dr. Savage, Dr. Savage. And we talked. They, I said, what movies are playing? He said, well, there's a movie you'd like called The Big Short. I said, I never heard of it. He said, well, it's about the housing crisis of 2008. I said, really? Can I go in and look? I'm, I'm not going to stay. I peeked in. It, it looked well done. So I said, I'll be back. So I went Tuesday night. And I say it's worth watching. I mean, because if you want to know what's going on and what's going to go on, you know, that's number one. And then last night, I can't wait till tonight, I'm going to watch. Believe me, I'm not going to watch the Democrat uh, dog and pony show between the, the uh, criminal and the uh, commie. Believe me, I'm not going to watch the commie versus the criminal tonight. I'm going to watch part two of the ABC miniseries called Madoff. I want to see him go to jail. I want to see one of his sons jump off a building. I want to see. I want to know why Ruth Madoff is not in prison. Am I wrong in asking that? You know, we have weird laws in America that, let's say you're a criminal kingpin. <laughs> if you get arrested and go to prison, you know that your wife has immunity from prosecution. Why is that? What is she, the gentler sex? She didn't ride around in his limousines. She didn't fly in the private plane. She didn't fly on a, a go on his yacht. She didn't live in the in the in the big penthouse. She didn't eat like a chaza in the apartment. She didn't chaz down thousand dollar bottles of wine as it was all going down. Why is Ruth Madoff living out of prison in Connecticut? Why did the government, the corrupt government, allow her to take two and a half million dollars and call it a pittance of what she had? She had nothing. She lived on stolen money. They ruined lives. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Where did all, all those missing billions go? I'll tell you where one of the billions went. The crook lawyer who was appointed the trustee of all of the people who are making claims, he should be in prison, in my opinion. The crooked lawyer that they appointed took a billion dollars in fees. Do you know that? That crooked thief who they appointed to be the executor or whatever they call it, the overseer of all of the stolen money, that crook has taken down a billion dollars in legal fees. You want to see a corrupt system? There's a corrupt system. And that sets the tone for the show today. And again, were well, you robbed by Bernie Madoff? Uh, do you think Ruthie Madoff is hiding the money and she should be shielded? I don't. Is she hiding money? I always thought the money was hidden somewhere. You know, here's a little thing that I, it's hard for me to say because it's going to feed a lot of conspiracy theories. It's well known that he gave a lot of money to Israel. Did you know that? Robert, did you know that Madoff, either from donations or whatever, and Israel refuses to return the money? Oh, you didn't know that. This is a very interesting paradox here. A lot of the charities that he robbed were Jewish charities. They trusted him because he was Jewish. I, I'm sorry to have to keep repeating it. But a lot of the big Jewish charities trusted him because he was one of them. He robbed them all equally. So you can't say Bernie Madoff was a racist. Ra a racist. He was just a raider. Bernie Madoff was not a racist. He was a raider. He stole equally, if not more so, from Jewish people because they trusted him. It just shows you what this gets you when you trust people based on your ethnicity. Uh, I can make a quick jump in faith here to talk about Barack Obama and his folks, but... That would be jumping too far for the average person. They'd fall into the abyss. Well, that, sh that sets the stage. The big short uh, made off a starring Richard Dryface. We will get to Obama with his speech yesterday at the mosque. We will get to Jimmy Carter saying he'd vote for Trump over you-know-who for reasons that uh, are crazy, but that's what, what you'd expect from a crazy man. And all the other news, views, and reviews on the Savage Nation. Turn this jailhouse garbage off. I ask for heavy metal, not for gibberish. For someone on drugs. I don't play that kind of drug-addicted music. Again, the same song. Turn this off now. Go search for some heavy metal that I like. Look, I'm trying to warn you it's going to happen again. I told you the housing bubble was built upon a house of cards and fraud, which you all know. I mean, that's not a revelation. I told you I saw the movie The Big Short which was too complicated for even me to 